Well, Nell Glenn is a rollicking, I love that word, rollicking, and radiant new comedy whereby an unlikely heroine takes her king and country by storm, becoming a media sensation of the 17th century. Now, to tell us more about the show, please welcome to the cafe its leading lady, Claire Tittum, and fellow cast member Tim Baum. Yeah! Awesome. Great to have you here. Before we start this interview, um, Mike, I was just talking to these guys before, and I realised that I'd interviewed Tim and Michael Galvin. Uh, I thought it was 1997 in, in Tauranga, it was 1995. Yep. And Claire, I also realize I interviewed you at about the same time when you were Waverly and you must have been 16 Seven. or something Seven. ridiculous. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> we all felt geriatric for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Thanks for yes. this. No, wiser, I think. Wiser, more professional. Yeah. And that is why we're all here together on this show. <laughs> um, Claire, you've been here before. Uh, Tim, welcome. Welcome. Great yeah. to have you on the cafe. Hey, thank you. Good to Sorry be about here. the coffee situation yes. today. Yes. a little disappointed. We're disappointed. <laughs> Working through it. We heard, because you know that that's the rep out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you'll get a great coffee. Claire said you'll get a great coffee. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. okay. Well, I'll trade up next time you're back in, okay? Um, okay, so tell us more about the show. Who is Nell Gwynn? Um, yeah, I suppose I should answer that one. Um, Nell Gwynn is a true life historical character um, that I didn't know about before starting this um, show, but many do. And she uh, was famous for sort of having an affair with King Charles II. So it was the 1660s, it was a pretty special formative time in London's history. Um, the Great Fire and the Depression and all sorts of fun stuff going on. Yeah, the thing about 1660, right? So King Charles II comes back to the throne. That's me, King Charles II. That's who you play, okay. yep, yep. Right. Um, because he'd been in exile for like 10 years and Oliver Cromwell had been running the joint. And Oliver Cromwell and his f uh, cronies had decided that there should be no joy in, mm. in England. Right. So, Pretty shut, joy. Shut the theatres, uh, like, shut down all fun. No Let's have a no, no fun sex, time. No, no nothing, Ugh. no nothing. Charles II came back and he was restored to the throne, so it's called the restoration for that reason. Right. And he said, know you know what, I'm, uh, I like joy and uh, I'm going like to change fun. things. So I'm opening the theatres, um, so I'm telling everyone, let's have a good time. And one of the things that he really thought was important is he's been living in France, where in France, women were allowed to be on stage playing women. Right. Up until that point in history, Women weren't allowed on stage, only so men, young men, played women. Women, right. yeah. That's that's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. And Charles II. still the tradition. Yeah, yeah. and Charles II, who, who had a. He, he appreciated women greatly. He said, a lot. He this is, <laughs> this is, appreciated women greatly. This is nonsense, he said. I would like to see them on my stage, so he put them on, and one of the exponents of that was Nell oh, Gwynn. Oh. So she ended up being um, pulled up onto the stage by another famous actor at the time um, called Charles Hart, who was sort of one of the first celebrities. Like, um, this was also at the time when um, it was the first time that people started to go to see plays because of who was in them and not just because of who had written it or what it was about. Mm. And so these, these actors that started to come up during this period of time sort of were the, the first media sensations. And you had the pamphleteers who would write all the gossip um, about everything that was going on at the time. So Nell um, was one of the first actresses to appear on stage playing female roles and that's when the king spotted her and uh, decided to take him for her, his own... Well, he appreciated um, her fine work. Right. <laughs> and, and, he said, and her, her <laughs> talent. Her talent. Attributes. But the great yeah. thing about it is, I mean, this is a true story. I mean, mm. this, this play, which is a fantastic comedy, it's, uh, it's, a tr it's, a, it's like a biopic. Right. And the great thing about Nell Gwynn and King Charles II is it was a genuine love story. Mm. So he did woo her back to the palace and she took her place as, a, as his mistress. In an apartment and everything. Yeah. And, 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 so and she, they had a couple of kids together. It wasn't exclusive, right? But because um, <laughs> he's quite famous for having like twelve mistresses. Well, no, because he was but a bit of a womaniser, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. A bit of a it was sort of a, just an occupational hazard. Right. <laughs> if you're king, you can get all sorts of things going just, on, can't you? It's kind of the way they did things. Um, <laughs> what about this? this? Has this been grown for? Has yeah. it been groomed specially yeah. for yeah, the show? I don't, I don't usually rock. I wasn't sure. I think he was going nineties of you. We're going for the like Jack Sparrow kind of sexy. Actually, does work. Actually, a bit of eyeliner. I can definitely see that. It's a comedy, you say, but it's also part musical. So you have to do some singing and dancing in it. How's Lots. that going for you, Claire? Apparently, How's uh, that going for you? Yeah, that's the thing that gives me these stomach flipping right. palpitations. And right now, now we're going to have Claire doing a little show <laughs> for you. Again. Um, yeah, singing on stage, uh, it's like a play with songs in it, yep. as, as opposed to being a musical, yeah, I would say. Right. Um, and, and we've got amazing, um, this amazing cast filled with comedians, but who also happen to be really clever musicians. So all the music in the show's live, being played live, sung live, maybe 
jigged and danced mm. a little bit live. Uh, and so Claire that's... is a fantastic singer. Well, she, well, won't, you... she won't say that, but she is. She's amazing. And oh. we've only had a week of rehearsals, and I'm already going, wow, I want to see that play. And I can't, because I'm in it. <laughs> no, but <laughs> if I could, I would be buying a ticket. Wow. Because that. no, that's the funny really thing, scary. isn't it? Mm. Most actors and actresses, they can all sing. And sometimes it's not until they're put in a situation where they have to explore that that they discover this amazing mm. talent. So can, can you give us a bit? No, <laughs> you have to pay. I'll You say most pay, can pay sing. I'm not convinced. Who was it in Mama Meryl Street? Yeah. Not entirely. No, what's his face? Pierce Brosnan. Who you mm. kind of look a little bit like or at the moment. old lame Miz. Was it Russell Crowe? Oh, was like a, yeah. He oh. talks by He talks on. Yeah, and he but he believed band. it. He believed that he, he was very good. <laughs> that's true, he did believe he was very okay, good. Okay. So, so exactly. we've got the singing and the dancing and the comedy, and I guess biopic feel to this. Mm. Set in the 1660s, so do you <coughs> use Shakespearean language? Um, the, gratefully, the play was only written about three years ago. Right. So a uh, very clever woman in Britain wrote this about Nell Gwynn, because one of the cool things about Nell um, is that she's got this, she's kind of a feminist icon. Yeah. Um, she, by being one of the first women on stage, was really bold and brave of that time she was known to be friends with a woman called Afra Bine who's one of the first ever female professional female writers like Virginia Woolf has sort of quoted mm -hmm. Afra Bine as one of her inspirations so she was a really famous historical character and the way that she conducted her relationship with Charles was even quite um original and and sort of brave like she asked to own this property freehold where at the time most of the ladies who were Miss Charles um, Charles's mistresses were sort of after titles and therefore you would be financially looked after forever whereas Nell didn't want a title she didn't care about that she wanted her children to be looked after and she fought for a title for mm. them. She originally. sounds sassy and amazing. But she was yeah. really sassy mm. and kind of ballsy and um and also I think one of the cool things about her she just didn't uh, alter who she was depending on who she was talking to. She yeah. came from the gutter. She, her, her, her mother um, ran a boardy house. Um, she was potentially a prostitute. It's not completely confirmed. We can neither confirm nor deny. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but she became an orange seller. So she was basically a hawker. And then she kind of stepped up to becoming an actress. And then she became a famous mistress. And so, it was, you know... So just... It's a genuine rags to riches story. Mm. And, it, and no, it's not Shakespearean language. Right. It's, it's, it's very much a contemporary take on that. So it's like... If people like going, to, for instance, to the Globe and seeing that really fun Shakespeare stuff that's and been going on lately, an inclusive sort of vibe, like yeah. on, yeah. you're in the party and we're in the party, and we all know we all know the equation. Let's get on. Yeah, yeah. Get it's, on it's like it's like that without the Shakespearean language. It's it's a contemporary right. take on it. So and contemporary kind of costumes as well. We've yeah. like got. You know, we get to we get to ruffle some bustles and stuff, but um, our amazing costumer Liz oh, Whiting yeah. has um, has is taking has got a really cool contemporary take on it. What well. about um, who do you think would be suitable for? Is it suitable for all ages or a certain adult themes? Or no, I think it's just, it's all ages. All ages. And There's a lot of innuendo and sexy <coughs> one-liners. Oh, being sounds like my sort of play. <laughs> we like you know, like it's not. It's not too in your yeah. face. No, it's fun. It's a spectacle, and and uh, I think it's a be a great girls' night out. Yeah, it's a love. There's a love story with a lot of. Yeah, and it is a genuine okay. love story. And yeah. we, we like that. And I think it, it is important to mention that that Charles II really was because he put women on stage. He was the original feminist. You see. Nice. So it is a kind of feminist play, and I think we should acknowledge <laughs> that Honest. Charles we II kind of led the way on okay, that. Okay, you're so like, particularly well. <laughs> if, this, if, if Nell and Charles hadn't yeah. existed. We would not be doing what well, we're doing. What would have happened? I wouldn't be on the stage. Exactly. Well, a woman would never have been on the stage. So this is all up to me. I did this. The woman <laughs> would never be on the stage. I, I would have had to play Cheryl West on Outrageous. And you would have done that. How crazy it. the world would have been. No, okay. look, you've got a great cast because I know Mark Hadlow's in this Mark as well, Hadlow. and it won He's an, good fun. A, a, an Oliver Award last year. This it, play it won the Olivier. Okay, yeah, okay, Olivier, you've done Olivier, well. Olivier. You sold it. Let's talk about you guys yourself personally. What are you oh. up to? So, Tim, you're doing some writing for Brokenwood. Yes, I write um, for the Brokenwood Mystery. He's on Prime TV. Yeah. And oh, and 800 yeah. words, you're a writer, and that's I one of my faves. Words, yes. yes, and so I've been doing a lot of writing for the last sort of 10 years um, for, for shows like 800 and Outrageous and, and Broken Wood. But um, I felt like I needed to, you know, mix things up, so hence Good. I've come back to the stage. I haven't been on stage for... Seven years? Excellent. Great. I think it's the seven year itch they talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's a good itch to be having. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a fine one to be having. What about you, Claire? Uh, I've just been um, rocking around as a high school teacher on Power Rangers with some with some fabulous young kids for the last kind of six months because um, they shoot that US TV show here. Yeah. So I did a couple of seasons of that. Um, and and good for you, TV. How's that going? Oh, it's going really well. Thank you. My yeah. little health and wellness website is sort of my passion project. And um, so whenever I'm <laughs> finding 
the time, which is not very often uh, at the moment. Then we, we're sort of trying to create little web stories and video stories about stuff that's good for your health and happiness, which, you know, is completely selfish because it just keeps me healthy and happy. Well, and I can feel that. I can feel great to have you both on the yeah, show, by the way. So I want you. a great production and uh, yeah, really come good. Along. It's yeah, it's going to be a fun night out. We it's, will. Yeah. And if you want to head along, the Auckland Theatre Company's Nell Gwynn opens at the ASB Waterfront Theatre on August the 15th. For details, you can head along to their website, atc.co.nz. Thanks again, guys. Yeah, thanks, awesome. guys. I'll have the coffee next time.